I'm Donnie. I'm the designer for Nomi Patterns number 2056. This pattern includes view A, which is this hiking shirt, and it also uh, includes a pair of pants that have an invisible zip, a zipper along the side seam. Uh, so this shirt uh, is what we're going to be sewing today. It's made from a light or medium weight cotton ripstop, and I used a netting fabric for the yoke lining and for the armpit gussets. Uh, the idea behind those is to uh, allow you to cool off quickly if you need it. Um, in terms of fit, this shirt is boxy. It's quite loose around the torso and it also has a drop shoulder and very little ease in the um, arm seam right here. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So for this pattern, you will need two front yoke pieces, two front pieces. You will also need your two pocket bags and your pocket flaps. You'll also need your back yoke piece, your yoke lining, which is cut from um, a contrast fabric and your back piece. You also need a or two pieces of your collar stand, which I've already interfaced one of them, and your collar piece, and I've also already interfaced one of them. Finally, you'll need your two sleeve pieces, and you will need the two sleeve gusset pieces cut out from your contrast fabric. So our first step is to assemble the front pieces together, and the first part of that is to attach the pocket flaps to the front yoke, and then we will attach the pocket bags to the rest of the front. Um, so I'll start by sewing the pocket flaps together. So I have two pieces that are interfaced. They'll each go to a pocket flap. I'm going to place those right sides together with another uninterfaced pocket flap. And then I'm going to, going to sew around these three edges and then trim along the curved edges, um, turn it out, and I think I will also top stitch when I'm done with that, even though that part's not in the instructions. So before I uh, start setting the pocket flap, I want to show that I've uh, traced out the stitching line along the curved edge, and that helps me personally uh, make a cleaner a curved edge. Um, but I've also pinned the pocket flap pieces together. Um, you don't need to do that, but I like to do it just for a little extra st stability when I'm cur uh, sewing around a curved edge like this.
So I've just finished sewing the pocket flaps together, and I also sewed on some buttonholes for later. So now I'm going to take my pocket flap, put it right sides together with my front yoke, and I'm making sure that the pocket flap is lined up within these two dots that I've marked on my pattern here. One. I don't know if you'll see it very well, but the second dot is right there. So now I'm going to sew down my pocket flap to the front yoke. So my pocket flap is attached to my front yoke, and now I want to attach one end of my pocket bag to the rest of the front pattern piece. So I'm going to do the same thing where I place, or similar thing, where I place the pocket bag right sides together, and I'm going to try and match up these two dots, and then I'm going to sew uh, between the dots. So now I have my pocket flap attached to the front yoke, and I have my pocket bag attached to my the rest of the front piece. So now I'm going to take the um, pocket bag and then match the other edge to the pocket flap, and then I'm going to sew those pieces together again between the line, or basically on the line that I've already sewn. So now my front piece, my pocket bag, my pocket flap, and my front yoke are all attached together. So now I'm going to match the bottom edge of my front yoke to the top edge of the rest of my front piece. And now I'm going to stitch from the edge to where it meets the stitching for the pocket. And then I'm going to stop and then stitch from where the stitching ends for the other side of the pocket and then to the end of the rest of my front yoke. So 
So I've just finished attaching the front yoke to the rest of the front piece, and I've also stitched down the pocket bag. So the next thing we'll want to do is to press the seams up towards the yoke, and then we're going to top stitch, press and top stitch this seam line. Um, before I press it, you'll notice that I can't press all these seams up without also pressing up the pocket bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the seam down to my stitch line and not through my actual stitches. And that way I can press this seam up. I'm going to do that for the other side. So now it's laying pretty flat. Um, actually, I'm also going to finish the edges with a zigzag stitch, uh, both along this seam and along the edges of my pocket bag. And then I will press and top stitch the front. I've just finished top stitching the front yoke. Uh, and now I need to fold in the uh, fabric for the button placket. So this pattern has a self-facing. Um, I also added an, an extra strip of interfacing to the um, outer edge to serve as, um, or just to make the button band a little stiffer because I prefer that kind of look, but um, you can make the call for yourself depending on the fabric or how you like things to look. So I'm going to fold in the edge of my front piece twice based on um, the lines that were on the pattern and then I'm going to press it down and sew on that edge. I've just finished pressing in the self-facing of my front piece. So now the pattern instructions tell you to uh, base down these raw edges at the top and uh, the bottom, and you can baste along this edge before you sew it to be more precise, um, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to edge stitch along this folded edge to sew down the self-facing or, or the button placket of, of the shirt. Here is my almost completed front piece. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, repeat all the steps for the other front piece, and then we can move on to sewing the back piece. Now I want to work on the back pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do, to do is attach the yoke lining, which I've cut out from my contrast fabric here. I'm going to attach it to the uh, lower back piece. Um, once I attach it, I think I'll top stitch and then uh, we can move on to attaching the yoke to the back. So I've sewn and pressed the yoke lining to my back pattern piece. And now I'm going to work on the uh, regular yoke piece. So I've transferred the fold lines from the pattern onto my yoke. And now I'm going to fold, press those in, and then edge stitch um, the fold. My back pieces are now sewn together, and now before I attach them, 
I want to sew on this hook and loop fastener to the center of uh, both the back and the inside of my yoke. So I'm going to sew the rough side of the hook and loop closure or the hooks to the yoke, and then I'm going to sew the soft side or the loops down to uh, the back side. And I didn't transfer over the pattern markings, so to find out where I should place them, I'm just going to quickly fold each of these pieces in half, find the center line, and then sew these onto that center line. So I've just finished sewing the uh, hook and loop closures to my back pieces, and now I'm going to baste uh, the back pieces along the shoulder seam and along the arm side. I have my yoke basted to my yoke lining now. You can probably see how I have a bit of excess fabric here on these edges. And it's probably because I'm using um, a really shifty mesh. So I'm going to trim this. And then I will attach the front pattern pieces to my uh, back piece at the shoulder seams and at the side seams. So I've just finished sewing my front and back pieces together at the shoulders. I've also finished the edges with a zigzag stitch and I've pressed the seam towards the back. Uh, now I need to sew the side seams together and I'm not going to sew it all the way up. I'm actually only going to sew, if I line it up. I'm going to sew up to this uh, small dot. Well, it was a small dot on the pattern, uh, but this dot right here, because we want to leave uh, this section open. Um, and once we put on our sleeve, we'll have another piece uh, that our gusset will fit into. Uh, before I sew up the side seams, though, I think I'm going to finish uh, this edge with the zigzag stitch, and then I'll sew, I'll sew it together. My side seams are now sewn, and I've only sewn up to the dot that's marked on the pattern, or it's a, sm it's a small dot that's marked on the pattern. Um, and now I'm going to press the seam allowances flat, and then I'll move on to working with the sleeves. So here are my sleeve pattern pieces. Um, and before I even start um, working with it, I think I will so or do a zigzag stitch along all the raw edges just to finish them off i'm going to be careful along the top curved edge here because i don't want to accidentally stretch it out uh, but uh, just a note i think i've said this before but in case i haven't there's no ease in the sleeve cap so it should be um, a one-to-one -one when you um, set it into the um, arm side So for the sleeve pattern, um, I'm now going to sew up the sleeve along the side, uh, but I'm not going to go all the way up. Um, I'm only going to go where this first dot is. And you can probably see from this pattern 
um, already. So this is our um, our sleeve cap up here. Uh, this is where we're going to stick the gusset. So we want to leave we want to leave it open. So I pressed my uh, or the seams of the sleeve. Um, and while I, I was at the iron, I also pressed in the sleeve hem. So first I uh, drew a line a quarter inch away from the sleeve edge, and then I did one an inch away, and then I just uh, folded and pressed on those lines. And now I'm going to edge stitch that down to finish off the sleeve hem. To attach the sleeve to the body, I'm going to match up the notches on the sleeve in the body. I'm also going to match up the dots on the sleeve pattern and the body pattern. And I'm going to match up for both the front and the back side. And I'll just deal with that off camera. Um, but I also want to emphasize that there's no ease um, for the sleeve, so it should be uh, basically one-to-one -one for your sleeve cap and your arm's eye. And we also want to sew only between the uh, mark points on the sleeve pattern um, here and here on the back side, because we want to leave a we eventually want to leave a gap that our gusset will fit into. I don't know if you can see that yet, but I'll just I'll just sew it and then I'll show you. So I've just finished attaching the um, the sleeve to the body of my shirt and what I have now is this nice uh, gusset shaped opening. Now I'm going to take my gusset in my netting fabric and I'm going to sew around each side and I'm only going to sew one side at a time so I'm going to sew down this edge, stop, move it, sew down this edge, stop, move it, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That's because I really want to get basically as close as I can to the corners where my fabric meets. So I'm going to do that and then hopefully it looks good and neat.
So I've attached the gusset and it looks okay from this side so far. See how it looks from the right side of the garment. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So now I'm going to press the seams away from the gusset, like, like this. And then I'm going to top stitch around these edges and then press the uh, sleeve to uh, shoulder seam allowance towards the body of the shirt. And then I think we can move on to hemming or uh, working on the collar of the shirt. Here are my collar pieces, and I'm going to sew them right sides together along these three edges. And then I'm going to turn it out, or actually, I'm going to clip the corners, and then I'll turn it out, press it, top stitch it, and then attach it to the collar band. Here is my collar band that I have sewn together and top stitched. So now I'm going to attach it to my collar band. Let's see. Okay. These sides go together and I match them on the center. And then I'm going to add the interface side of the collar band. And now I'm going to sew along this top edge. Um, and then before I turn it out, I'll probably trim the curved edges. And then I will attach the collar to my shirt. Here is my uh, collar and collar band attached. I think I'm going to top stitch along this top edge right here that connects the collar band to the collar. And then I'll uh, sew this to the uh, shirt. Um, and once I've done that, uh, we can move on to sewing the hem. For the hem of the shirt, I simply folded in the raw edge by a quarter of an inch, and then I folded in again by about another quarter inch. And now I'm just going to edge stitch along this folded edge to finish off the hem. Here is the hem that I just sewed, and now my shirt is almost done. I just need to add some buttonholes along the front placket here, and then we will be finished. So here is the 
almost completed shirt. I just need to rinse off some of the fabric marker. But otherwise, it's done. Here's the front, side, back. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or it was helpful if you were sewing along too. And if you make this and you're on Instagram, uh, please feel, feel free to tag me or send me pictures of what you make. Um, yeah, enjoy.